Before we get started, I got a sticker shout out to Fireball Tool. Now, Fireball Tool, they make some very cool stuff. Uh, they make these cast iron uh, square fixtures, and what these are for is you clamp your workpiece onto it and it gives you a perfect 90 degree angle while you weld it. Anyway, I apologize for the long hiatus, but I had some health issues and I did some remodeling here around the house. So uh, now I am finally back. So the last time I saw you guys, we were working on a hand punch and, uh, and what I had built, it was just too flexy and it would not do the job. This thing takes 6,000 pounds of pressure to be able to do what I wanted to do. This leverage action here is not enough to create that kind of pressure. So we're going to have to rework that whole thing. The new rendition is going to be made around this piece of one inch plate steel. Now one of the things I think was a, a flaw in my logic was using this linear bearing. The idea has its good points, but I think there's room for improvement. And I think that improvement should be to have the entire barrel here sliding inside a tube. Now I'm going to remove this socket that I made from the old one because uh, I think we can still use that. Now I don't know if you noticed, but that weld did not even stick. This is why you should always grind off the mill scale. The weld material stuck to the uh, mill scale and the mill scale broke free of the steel. Now looking at this, we've got our guide tube for the punch and our uh, bracket to hold the die. We're going to want to come in here and remove a portion of this. And I'll just mark that and we'll cut some of that out. Okay, that alignment is looking pretty good to me. Now the next thing we're going to want is a relief slot in there so we can stick our piece of steel in there and, and we're not trapped uh, punching only near the edge. And there you can see my red line. We'll just cut that out and that'll be more than enough. We're going to want to weld these on too and that's going to be the perch for the, uh, uh, for the die. It's pretty thick stuff, so on, a, on something like this, you'd want to bevel the edge so you can get the weld deep inside there. And also grind that mill scale off, because it's going to be a weld right there as well. Now I told you folks I was having a little bit of trouble keeping things square on a lot of my projects. So my solution to that was to reach out to Fireball Tool and get my square welding fixtures. They didn't give me these, I just met the guy at a maker hangout in uh, Atlanta when I went to Fabtech. So this is the maiden voyage. We're going to try it out, see how they work. Okay, so you see I've got the, I've got the fixture clamped to the table and then the piece I'm going to weld clamped to the fixture. Now these two pieces, which are going to be the home of my die perch, I want them to be square to the face of this. So we'll just leave them hanging out like that and use my little square to line them up. Then throw a quick clamp on there and that should hold it in place just right. Okay, that's the first step. We can go ahead and tack that together. Okay, so we have the perch for our die socket, and we're going to have to install that, and there's where the die will go. And then we also need to mount the slide that the, uh, that the punch will pass through. And then we need to build an eccentric lever arm up right above that. Okay, so uh, when, I, when I welded that tube on, it uh, lost its roundness, so I had to come in and uh, ream it. And then here's our, our die, and I've got those aligned, and then that should work just fine like that. Now, um, I need to do a little better weld on the die perch. I'll be able to use different size dies if this thing's strong enough. Okay, so here's what I've come up with so far, is I've got these bearings. They have a half inch hole in them, so I can use a half inch bolt as my pivot axle. And I got this piece of pipe that almost fit. Now I'm going to admit to you that I did turn these on my lathe 
um, to get the inside diameter to the right size at the, as this bearing. But before I had a lathe, I would just use a file and a vise. So you don't have to have a lathe to do this. I've done this for years before I got a lathe. Anyway, so we need to figure out the eccentric, how much distance it needs to move. We can measure that. Okay, and one thing that happened that I just now noticed is when I welded that it lifted this edge. So now it's not, it's not perpendicular to the punch and I'm gonna have to fix that before we go farther. But judging by the look of it, sledgehammer ought to do just nicely. Okay, that should be good for my top end and that should be good for the bottom. That's where the punch starts to taper out. We're going to make the eccentric out of this block a half inch thick plate. I think I'll start by just rounding it on this back corner here. Looking at how this is going to have to move, it looks like the pivot is going to have to be right about at that corner. Let me go ahead and drill the hole. Now folks, if you've seen more than two of my videos, you know there is no telling what you'll find on this channel. But if you click that notification bell, you'll get a notification every time I release something new. And I think I'm going to trim that little corner off up at the top as well to uh, make space for the eccentric. Okay, now here's what i come up with so far. I'm fairly certain that's going to work. We're pretty close to punching a hole in some metal here, uh, but there's not, it's just a tiny corner of contact area between the bearing mount and the frame. Uh, so I'm going to make a couple of gussets to weld onto the frame and connect the uh, bearing mount to it. Okay, here's what I'm going to make. I've drawn a circle over on this 3 8 inch plate and I'm going to grind that out. And I've got two of them here. So I spent quite a bit of time on the bandsaw, cutting out as much of that material as I could. Now I'm just coming in with a grinder to make it round and fit the bearing mount into it. Okay, now, let's put this in there. Okay, and that is, that is looking good, but I need to make a little bit more clearance. This is almost ready to go together, but the one thing I want to do is get rid of some of this excess material here. And I'm thinking just cut that off. Because I, I don't want to run the risk that it may weaken it. I mean, this is 3 8 inch plate, but it did flex in the other models. Okay, so that's what I came up with, and I think I'm going to go with it. It's looking pretty good to me. Yep, we'll tack this together and then weld it. Okay, this action is looking good. It's nice and smooth. I need to figure a way to, to get this to retract. Maybe a spring will do that, I'm not sure. But I think we're ready to test it. Here goes. And that is what comes out of it, right there. Anyway friends, you know what they say, the third time is the charm. And uh, here it is. I present one fully functional bench punch. I do need a longer handle on it because that took a little more effort than I wanted to have to exert. Uh, but I think a longer handle is all it's going to take to make that happen. Uh, there was no flex in it. It'll punch a hole as far as six inches from the edge of a piece of steel. But this is it. This is exactly what I was going for. And uh, now I have it. I'm going to start using it. I wonder what I'm going to end up doing with these knockouts because I will accumulate these. Anyway, I'm going to take it back apart and paint it 
and then put it back together again. I'm also going to add some sort of spring retractor so I don't have to manually lift this uh, punch. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do that, but if you want to see the result of both of those endeavors, find me on Instagram. My name there is wildman.tech. And not only can you see the finishing touches on this project, but you can see all my other stuff as it happens there. Before we go, it would be remiss of me not to mention the worldwide coronavirus pandemic causing a disease called COVID-19. The date of this recording is Saturday, April 4th, 2020, and we are right in the thick of it. I live in Sacramento, California, and my entire town is on lockdown. We are not supposed to leave home for anything other than the bare essentials. I've been getting a lot done because I've been staying home. I recommend you stay home as well. If you do go out around other people, stay away from them as far as you can. And if you do have to come in close proximity to them, wear a mask. Anything is better than nothing, and the objective of the mask is to keep you from infecting other people. It also helps you keep your hands out of your mouth and nose should they become contaminated with the virus. This is a very serious thing and people are dying all over the place because of it. Ask your doctor if medical advice from a fabrication shop is right for you. So please stay safe and do whatever you can to protect yourself and others around you. With that said, be well my friends, and please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. Click over here to see something that will help you cope with the coronavirus pandemic. And have a good one.